Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Sonic Music Releases, the series where I talk about and look over physically released Sonic music from over the years. And today, I'm taking a look at a pre-adventure music release, uh, a pretty interesting one at that, called the Sega Arcade Selection DRAM Remix. I'll get into what that title means shortly. This was released December 1st, 1995 in Japan, and what it is is a collection of remixes of songs from various Sega games like Fantasy Zone, OutRun, Space Harrier, etc. All of the remixes are performed by a group called DRAM, which, judging by their discography, um, it seems like they're just a group of musicians that were put together to do remixes like this for specific releases on CD. Like, they don't have, there were, like, there, I don't believe there were any, like, DRAM concerts or anything. It was, seemed like just a manufactured group for a release like this. The track list is kind of on the back, but it's a little weird. It's, uh, in order on the, um, the OB right there, but I'll have a scan of it up as well. It is Sonic related. You can see on the cover it actually has, uh, the emblem from Sega Sonic the Hedgehog with Ray and Mighty on it. Uh, also, excuse my lack of Sega Sonic merch, I don't have a ton of it, so enjoy the Sonic Nendoroid. So, there's only one track on this that is Sonic related, and it's literally just titled Sonic. Like, that's, that's all it's called. It's actually a remix of a song from Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, the arcade machine. I believe this is the only form that any music from Sega Sonic was ever released officially. Also, yeah, judging from the arcade selection, uh, it seems like all of these songs were from um, arcade machines that Sega had made, and um, this group DRAM just remixed a bunch of them. Anyway, it was published by VAP, or VAP. You might have heard me talk about them back in the Sonic Adventure 2 episode. They published uh, Multidimensional and Cuts Unleashed. Um, the company itself is still going strong today. They, I, I know they do a lot of like anime music and stuff like that. And it retailed for 2,500 Japanese yen or roughly 22, 23 dollars. So let's get the booklet out and so I can show you how it looks without the glare from the jewel case on it. Um, solid black with just the text all around. Let me give you a up close look at that Sega Sonic emblem. It's really cool seeing that on like a, an official released thing because being an arcade machine that never really got a ton of merchandise, um, you don't really see stuff like this too often. Anyway, down here, Sega Enterprise Limited, and um, basically just the same stuff in Japanese right up there. Uh, the back has like this circle design with all of like the track list is on here, um, but it's just like what what comes first. Like I, I don't even understand how to read this. Um, Sega Arcade Selection DRAM Remix up there. We have VAP and the catalog number down here, compact disc logo over there. Now opening it up, we see the track list on the inside as well. Special Talk Sega vs. DRAM. I'm assuming this is uh, having some kind of interview with uh, people involved with the, the DRAM remix group, or whatever that you want to call it. Flipping through the booklet, there's actually quite a bit of text and um, pictures from various arcade machines, and oh look! Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. This is actually so awesome. Like, I don't think anything like this has really ever been released. Um, maybe in some kind of Sega magazine in Japan or something. But look at all those screenshots from the game. That's really cool. Uh, more screenshots from uh, more of the games that were remixed or had music remixed in this. Some staff credits on here and uh, more pictures of arcades. And uh, special thanks to Sega Enterprise Limited, you know, for... Uh, I, releasing this, I guess. Probably saw it at the beginning, but here is the obi and what it looks like. Pretty much everything is in Japanese except the... Um, well, actually, the track list looks to be in English and Japanese. Um, we got Sega Arcade Selection DRAM Remix down here, VAP, catalog number, retail value, and um, what it says on the obi. That's interesting that the obi is actually completely in Japanese. Usually, obis are, or I should say, usually for Sonic releases, the obi spine is usually in English, while the um, the spine of the release itself is in Japanese, but you can see right here, they're actually like the exact same thing. But of course, this was uh, early Sonic days. It's not like this was a specifically Sonic-themed release or anything. And of course, gotta take a look at the disc. It's like this... Uh, 
kind of mint green color with uh, the same design as the the booklet on the and the back has on it. Um, Sega Arcade Selection DRAM Remix, and some legal information, the VAP logo on the bottom. And so, how much is this bad boy worth nowadays? I would say anywhere from $15 to $35. Um, it is kind of uncommon, but it's not particularly really, really rare or expensive. Um, something can be uncommon and you don't see it that often, but it won't um, demand too high of a price, and that's kind of what we have here. I forget what I paid for mine, but it wasn't too much. I think it was around $20. I'm, I'm, I don't know. And that's usually where I would end the episode, but I did forget to mention it has a bootleg. And I actually own said bootleg, so I can do a comparison on this episode of Sonic Music Releases. Actually, while gathering info about this, I uh, remembered there was a bootleg, and I just kind of on a whim searched the the name of this release on eBay, and I found a um, not-too-expensive bootleg uh, on eBay. You know, buying bootlegs, that's your uh, that's kind of your own choice. I really only buy bootlegs of official uh, products that I already own, mostly so I can compare and contrast them. But um, yeah, first of all, we want to take a look at the booklets. Well, I don't know how good it's going to show up on camera, but uh, this is the genuine booklet over here, and this is the fake. Um, you can really see the print quality difference. It's it's a lot darker, not as saturated on the on the fake. Um, again, they, they look pretty similar on camera, but hopefully you can tell that this one is indeed fake. Also, the real product actually is a booklet with multiple pages that I showed you. The um, <laughs> the bootleg simply has a pamphlet. It's the first and last page only. Also, uh, and this is pretty common. Um, with this, uh, the Sanmei Records. It has an order form, I believe, is what it is. That's not too uh, out of place, but I got a, um, Final Fantasy VI sticker? Original soundtrack sticker? I don't know why. And it wasn't the seller. The seller was from America, and, um, I'm pretty sure they thought this was a legit release. Um, and this was sealed, too, so <laughs> Sanmei, uh, you, was I supposed to get like another sticker or are you advertising another bootleg that you have released? So the simple fact that the bootleg does not even have a booklet, it's really just like a pamphlet, is uh, interesting in and of itself. Here we can take a look at the OB difference and they actually look um, quite different. The spine on the bootleg is black and has a completely different look to the text and everything. On the bottom of the front facing part, you can see they got rid of the VAP and the retail value and put whatever that says on there. They kept the DRAM but made it darker. The text on the side looks a little bit different than this. It doesn't seem to have like a very faint black outline or drop shadow or whatever that is. Um, and on the side, it has the... looks like it has the track list, but it actually looks very different. You can see they put like disc 1, disc 2, disc... all that like details that this one never even had. It also doesn't have a barcode on it and has a very large version of the compact disc logo down here and Sunmay Records is uh, who is responsible for bootlegging this. And if we take a look at the discs themselves, the bootleg is on the left on screen, the genuine one is on the right. The bootleg is um, darker in color for some reason. Of course, they got rid of all of the legal information around the CD, because this is an illegal uh, release. Um, catalog number and the VAP logo have also disappeared. Uh, that is to be expected from a bootleg. And then looking on the back, we can see that the backs also look pretty different as well. Um, it got rid of the compact disc logo up here, as well as a couple other things. Got rid of the... Uh, well, they added a barcode. I don't, I don't really know what that's about. Of course, got rid of the VAP logo. Something interesting, though, you can see what they did. They actually just took the design from the back of the booklet and made that the back of the entire jewel case. Kind of an interesting move. Usually they go as far as to, you know, copy the back of the um, the genuine one as well. I don't really know why. Uh, Sega logo is now missing, as well as the copyright Sega Enterprises Limited from the bottom. I'm not going to tell you what a bootleg is worth because, you know, that's pretty much up to the buyer. Um, like I said, it's kind of morally up to you to buy bootlegs. It's um, it's not really a, an ethical thing, because um, even if you buy a bootleg now, the only people profiting are going to, most of them, 
are going to be uh, people that own them, you know, secondhand. You're not really uh, buying them direct from bootleggers anymore. I would really suggest only getting bootlegs um, if you own the, the genuine article. Um, I would not suggest buying bootlegs as a substitute for buying an authentic product. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed the little bootleg comparison I was able to add in there, and I will see you in the next episode.